Hi, I'm Claire Krieger and I am at the Collider Space in the South Central Regional Library. So today I'm going to be talking about some tools and processes in my personal art practice. For making zines, materials are very simple. We need paper, something to draw with, something to photocopy. Some other things that I find to be really helpful in making zines, uh, a bone folder, which will help us to give really good creases um, when we're folding paper because a lot of this is a lot of pieces of folded paper. So in the middle, there's a lot of creasing. I also use scissors for everything. They're one of my favorite, favorite tools. You can see I do a lot of paper cutout. So I might make collages. I need to be really precise. I'm always using scissors. The most specialized item here is going to be this long arm stapler. So the reason I have this long arm stapler is because regular staplers, you cannot reach far enough to actually staple the center of a zine or anything larger than, say, this. So this and this and this, all of these things I need to slide in here to get the staple appropriately. And you can make something that's actually quite deep if you wanted to, because I can go in up to here. So a long arm stapler, if you're gonna be making a lot of printed things, is super, super helpful. For zines, you wanna have the ability to photocopy them if possible. So I have a photocopier at home. You could print them out. You could go to a local place like the library and make copies or prints. Some, some other work that I do is more professional-based illustration. So for the covers of Juke's Literary Magazine, I typically start with watercolor, piecing things together, starting to figure out what I want my design to be. I do a lot of collage work. So these are my behind the scenes pieces that I was trying to play with for this cover. This is this rainbow, changed a little bit. And then these have a little bit of digital illustration on them as well. In the back we have some more watercolor and some more collage. Even if my work becomes a digital um, print or a digital illustration, it usually starts as watercolors or drawings or collage. So for this, this is a watercolor painting. And then these bricks are all cut out of different pieces of uh, magazine material because I like the different textures. So we have these bricks, and this is actually part of this back cover piece. So most of my work starts very hands-on, um, very analog, no matter what it turns into. So for bookmaking and zine making, I'm working a lot with paper and collage and copying. Books would be one-off, whereas zines would be, I'm able to make multiples indefinitely. The in-between of that is some of these more intensive, I guess I would still call them zines. This is called Consumed, and it's an accordion zine, but it has a lot of different materials within this. So I actually sewed this edge with a sewing machine, and I used screen printing to get the texture of an orange skin. I hand cut all of these, but I didn't just make one, I made about 25. And it has a scratch and sniff sticker on the cover. So when you open it, it's also an accordion book about the process of oranges. So buying an orange, using it for dye, and eventually it becomes, I, you know, I also use it to make invisible ink. So this is an accordion book put together. It can come out like this, like a regular accordion book but it was simple enough that I was able to make a decent run of them. And I really like to play with materials. That's why I end up using so much in my practice. I like to use lo-fi accessible materials because I think that's really important. And I also like to learn new ways to use materials. Sometimes with my zine making, I will try something new for the cover that would be a little bit higher end rather than just a photocopy. So these are black and white covers. This is a book about car graphics. So there's a lot of, the inside is color, is printed. But on the cover, this is just a black and white copy. And then I went through into these really quick watercolor lines because I thought it would elevate my cover a little bit. This is a zine about 90 celebrities as cacti. It's a coloring book. But what I did was it's full black and white. And then I made these sleeves that are colorful. So when if you were to get this, you could take this off. But I made all these sleeves to elevate my covers. And then there are a lot of different celebrities we all might remember from the 90s as potted plants. So it's a coloring book and it's also on a heavier weight because when I was thinking about building this, I wanted to think about a material that would hold 
markers or color pencils, something that would actually be able to hold the media that maybe you would want to use to color it. Something else I like doing with zines is figuring out how to make new sizes or formats. You can see I do different sizes. I try never to do like the same size every time. So this is one I made called Scenes from Quarantine. And it has a few pages, not too many pages, but it's actually just one piece of paper. And this is something we're gonna get into in a later video, how to make something like this. It's one piece of paper and when you fold it out, it has a poster on the back. So this is a really simple process. And then it kind of folds back into itself. I also have a series of zines about uh, my friend Frankie's dreams. So the first one I made was really tiny and little, but I wanted to change it every time. And these happen every couple of years when I receive a good amount of dreams from my friend Frankie. So my second one looked a little bit different, different in size. And I just made the third one. And I really wanted to play with paper. I guess that should be my motto, play with paper. In my third one, I wanted it to be a comic style that folded out. So there are some of these dreams that fold out. And I had a lot of fun figuring out how to design something that would require this. So I like the challenge of building things. When I try to figure out how to make something a little bit different, I will look for resources on the internet, but I also will often build, for almost any zine that I've made, a mock-up. A lot of times, even if I'm just trying to decide on the layout or the number of pages, I will do really quick drawings and just because I need to see visually, I need to hold it. So I don't really do a lot of digital uh, layouts entirely because I need to understand how it works. So I typically have a little tiny paper model and sometimes it's hard to Google exactly what you're looking for, but the internet is certainly helpful in giving ideas about how to build things. But also hands-on practices are a great way to learn. For a lot of my video work, I end up making props and changing the scale of things. So these are all some boulders that were part of a landslide. They are paper mache. I have quite a few of these. I also have a lot of backgrounds from video pieces that I've been working on. So this is this is the background of a video that I made. This one is about mushrooms as a sense of renewal. This was for a project called Paper Pavilions. It was commissioned by the Indiana government. And so I was really excited to be part of this show. From the video about climate change that was part of Future Is Now through Louisville Visual Art, um, that's where the boulders came from. But I also built all of these tiny little pieces which moved around with stop motion animation. So I've got my little plastic bag. I have some sunscreen. I had a lot of pieces of trash that were floating through the ocean. And so they all ended up in the bag. So I've got these little paper toothbrushes, a lot, a lot of paper, paper things. So these were all pieces that were used in a stop motion segment where they were floating around in the ocean. And so each, each frame, they moved a little bit. And by the end of that scene, they were all inside of this paper bag. So it was a tiny little bit of movement at a time. Since a lot of my work is collage or watercolor based to begin with, I am always doodling, I'm always drawing um, with different materials. Sometimes I'm just playing with paper. Sometimes I always had have a lot of different sketchbooks that I might have an idea. So I was kind of on a roll painting a lot of faces and I built this sketchbook. Um, I tend to build sketchbooks so that I can just have like extra paper that I wouldn't do anything with. So this is actually made of the sketchbook cover. And I use these last couple pages to make this. So got some faces I was painting in here. And this has been fun because I can always go back and pull these for different projects if I need ideas. So it's nice to have like a stockpile of things, get my ideas on paper. I've done a lot of zine fests around the country. So that's something that I really love to do because you get to meet people. You get to meet other people making zines and you can trade with them. There's three zine fests coming up I should be at that have gotten canceled and rescheduled a couple of times, but um, it's always nice to meet people and to be able to talk about your work. So I like to table at those sorts of events. I've done the zine fest, the San Diego zine fest, Atlanta zine fest, the Lexington zine fest. I hope to do Chicago and Cincinnati this year sometime. My next video, I will be talking about how to make accordion books such as these. And I hope that you will join me as well for my zine making workshop on November 18th over Zoom.